I imagine the servants who had uh, dumping water over Pharaoh duty were like, really? Like, do I have to be here? Like, and can't you wear some pants while we do this? I mean, I know it's like your shower time, but can't, can't literally anybody else do this? Welcome back to Privy. Privy is a podcast about bathrooms recorded from my home bathroom. I'm your host, Hunter Hoover, and I love bathrooms. Uh, and boy, howdy, have I used some bathrooms this week. Um, just a little uh, weekly potty update as usual. I ate Applebee's again, so that's uh, that's great. Um, and, you know, whenever you eat Applebee's, um, for me, I always know that it's going to be a problem. Uh, and, and there was a day last week where I think I ate too much Italian sausage. Uh, we had this Italian sausage situation for a Valentine's event, um, for, for my job at the church. And, um, yeah, I, I barely made it to the toilet. Like I was in my car ready to go to my second job for the day. Uh, And I had to get out of my car and run back into my first job and uh, do do the deed. And um, thankfully, I was bailed out. Uh, But yeah, I I uh, narrowly missed that one. So and I was, you know, I got to my second job like right when I was supposed to. But, you know, like letter Kenny's right. If you're right 10 minutes early, you're late. That's all there is to that. And, and we've been enjoying, uh, recently I'm trying to have more folks on the show. And so, um, with that in mind, if y'all, uh, want to, or have a story you would be interested in sharing and want to share it, uh, audibly with the podcast, feel free to send me an email, privycast at gmail.com and let me know that, uh, hey, I have something I want to share and uh, we'll turn it into a full episode. Also, uh, connect with us social media, uh, at privycast, all those things, and we're going to get those out of the way right here. Um, but with having all of these folks on the show, and, and we've also been doing a lot of thematic episodes, so we've had a lot of folks on the show and a lot of thematic episodes, and it's been some time since we have talked history and etiquette. And so, since it has been so long, this week we're going back uh, to a tried and true format. Hunter does research and then kindly suggests how we can live our lives. That's called etiquette. Uh, I've shared on the show that a morning staple for me is copious amounts of coffee and Based on the scent and texture of my whole bathroom situation, probably too much coffee. But we're not we're we're not getting into that. Uh, we're not talking coffee. Although, no, uh, we're not doing that today. But today we are talking about perhaps an even more widespread morning routine staple. Uh, for those who do not drink coffee. This one is probably still within the realm of reason for things that they might get up on in the morning. I'm talking showers. This week on Privy, we're talking showers. Where do they come from? And better yet, how do you do it right? So grab your loofah, get the water set just right before you get in, because it's shower week here on Privy. I've gone on record uh, on the podcast saying and and I'll die on this hill, huh? Because so far, uh, we we're heard that you got to be showering off before you get in the bath. But I'm on record saying that showers are superior to baths as a method for cleaning ourselves, and we're gonna see that this week. But much like everything that we look at on the show, by way of bathroom amenities we have today, it's a thing that we take for granted, really. Uh, like, for instance, the day I wrote this. Uh, and and put this episode together. My alarm went off. Moments later, I was able to stand beneath hot running water and get clean. Wake up for the day and start my day off on the right foot. I didn't have to worry about where the water was going, whether it would be hot. I didn't have to empty a tank. It was great. 
Some might even say it was perfect. It's a wonder. And like many wonders, the people who have gone before us, who have cleared the path and paved the way and, and wiped out the bottom of the shower, they did so so we can get to where we are today. Uh, and it took time. So as always, we need to talk about where showers came from. Uh, and it's going to be kind of one of those, like, we got to put all the p- pieces of the puzzle together because there's a lot of moving pieces that bring us the shower. Because in essence, a shower is just a distribution of water that spills over your head. And like, unless you ask R. Kelly, that's what a shower is. So just, we're moving on. And originally, showers were likely just humans using two different natural phenomenon to get themselves clean. Like, at the end of the day, at the no, at the beginning of the day, when we talk showers, what showers originally were, they were not a a facet of a home good. They were a natural phenomenon. One, the rainstorm would have been used to get clean, uh, especially by those who needed to get clean quickly before indoor bathing situations. So the reason that, that this became a thing was because people realized, hey, you know, when I'm all mucky and grimy and I just got like filth in all my filth crevices, if I go down to the river or the stream or the pond or the lake, like, it's good and I can get clean, but, like, it doesn't make the water, like, pull the filth away from the filth crevices. And I'm going to try not to say crevices too many more times, but here we are. Uh, also, it's funny when uh, the man versus wild guy says crevices because he says crevasses, uh, so that's fun. Um, but... This the rainwater spilling over you, it it got them more clean than sitting in the water. A rain shower gets the water off and away from you faster. You're not sitting in it, which of course is my beef with baths at the end of the day. So it would start to rain, and you would go out and you would start singing in, and and you would rain yourself off. But if you live in a place where maybe rain is less reliable. You may need another source of running water to stand under. And for years and years, waterfalls were the go-to spot. And I'm probably talking like less robust waterfalls because if you stand under like a heavy-duty waterfall, those things could knock you straight down. Like, they, they're they rough. So we're talking like small waterfalls here. And if you hear this stuff and you think, well, like, okay, but I don't care about Babar the Terrible Caveman and how he got clean in all his crevices. Okay. I want to know about the history of the showers that I have, like in my bathroom. How did we get there? Well, essentially, someone got tired of going out in the rain or walking to the waterfall and said, hey, you know what? We have got to figure out how to get this water poured over our head where I want it poured over my head. And if you thought like, well, Hunter's first steps on this shower journey were boring. I can't wait to see where it goes. The next steps in the journey follow. They, they're not much more surprising. Um, because as people created pots and stoneware, people would pour water into these and heat them up and then pour them over their head. It's not technically a shower, but it's a next step. Because now you can control for the environment. You don't have to be standing out just letting the rain just beat against your dome and and standing under waterfalls like a crazy person. You can heat this water because when it's in this stoneware and these these, uh, jars and stuff, it could be heated up. We're getting there. Baby steps. One question, though, uh, that I have in this area that is just a concern – and so like you've got let's say you've got like a five to ten pen ten pound uh ceramic pot and you're you're dumping it over your head. And let's just say that you drop it, because you know it happened. And little Dougie, you know, he's trying to do a little do a little like ceramic pot shower job, and he just yoinks this shower pot and just kablamo all over the floor, cracks the pot, shatters everywhere. When you drop something in the shower nowadays, it is the worst thing ever. It is loud. It lands on your foot. Bad. And then you got a ceramic jug, Dougie, 
and he drops the whole thing on his foot. Not great. Zero out of ten. I can't recommend that. that I can't imagine it's good. But the ancient Egyptians, and you knew we were talking about cleanliness. You know we're talking about the ancient Egyptians. Because remember, the ancient Egyptians were the originators of the idea that cleanliness, maybe not the originators, but they believed that cleanliness was literally next to godliness. They're always getting a hand on the getting clean ball. And the Egyptians had special rooms where they would stand or sit underneath pouring water as, not great here, a slave or servant dumped water on their head to get them clean. You know, Pharaoh goes into his special shower room and has some guy come in and dump water over him. Like, I imagine the servants who had uh, dumping water over Pharaoh duty were like, really? Like, do I have to be here? Like, and can't you wear some pants while we do this? I mean, I know it's like your shower time, but can't can't literally anybody else do this? Jeez. But the water would flow off uh, and be collected and had to be taken out and emptied. And so, as civilization... Civ- Run at it again. As civilizations continued, so did advancements in showering technology. Ancient Greece introduced us to plumbing, which could carry the water away in lead pipes. Those wealthy enough could have water pumped into their homes and the refuse pumped away. Personal showers, however, were for the rich and ruling class. The Greeks also introduced another new location where even the poor could go to get clean. The bathhouses, although showers were not a primary installment in these. Um, That said, they have found in Pergamum and other sites like it uh, that there are what looks like public showers that function. um, It's like these ancient discovery, architectural discoveries that look like um, what would be like stone locker room showers where like they have the little like water spigot holes. Uh, and then they're like little sections for people to stand in. It looks like locker rooms, but made out of stone. And they found these. Um, and so they had this idea of a public shower house. It's kind of interesting. The Romans expanded on this. We talked about um, their expansion in this in the Roman public bathrooms episode, which I'm going to say, like, I, for information's sake, those those episodes may be worthwhile going back to check out. But... I will apologize up front. The audio quality of those old episodes is not great. Um, We have come a long ways, and we're just going to continue to keep learning here on Privy. But, uh, yeah, it's it's tough. But here, here we are. We're in progress. But this system... Of a, of a public gathering place or a system of water to be poured on you continued until the mid-1700s. Hundreds, And it was during the mid-1700s when a stove maker invented what we would now identify as, hey, that thing looks like a modern shower. William Feetham, <laughs> Feetham, you know, if that guy had was here today, he'd get made fun of. Like, your last name is Feetham. I'm just, of Ludgate Hill, London, invented a hand pump system. That worked essentially like a kid's water park big dump bucket. You know the ones when you're at the water park and you got these like little like bone skinny as a rail kids and the big giant bucket of water like 40 feet up in the air just dumps on them. And you're like, how did that not break your spine, child? Uh, That thing, that is essentially what William Feetham uh, invented. It took water through this hand pump up to the top where it was gathered in a basin, or a tub, if you will. Now, I don't like the idea of there being a tub above your head. Like, have you ever watched Looney Tunes? That's that's generally going to end poorly. But you would pull on a chain attached to a plug, and the water would be released and then allow you to shower off. Much like the kid's bucket, the water was recycled. So, you would fill the bottom of the tub, with preferably hot water, but back then you had to heat the water in, in like a stove, bring it in, dump it into the thing, and then hand pump it, rent, 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 sucks the water up to the top, it sits in the basin, by the time the basin fills and you pull the plug, who knows how hot that water is? Like, 
for real. And then you would keep recirculating that same water for the duration of your shower. And so it's going to be cold by the end of that. And you know what's not good? Cold showers. And I know there's people who are like, well, you got to take a cold shower because it's good for your pores. Like, but they don't do it because they like it. They do it because there's some sort of strange health benefit in some way. Or they're trying to, like, discipline themselves through pain and suffering and lack of happiness. Uh, but, yeah, cold showers are bad. And so, in 1810, the English Regency Shower was invented by anonymous by an anonymous inventor. This, this English Regency Shower used the same cycling methods that Feetham had come up with, but it heated the water at the top. The original design was over 10 feet tall. It looked like a snake nest of pipes that like stood in the corner of your bathroom. It was weird. About 40 years later in the 1850s, when indoor plumbing was redesigned, this method was tag-teamed. They took English Regency shower uh, and they tag-teamed it with the knowledge that we had about sewage and plumbing from the Greeks and Romans, and, and we put those two together, bada-bing, make a shower baby, to make traditional showers that we have today. But like, so like by 1850, they had a thing that like looked like a modern shower, with the exception of you were still like heating water and dumping it into the bottom, and then using eventually for that to like be pulled out into the plumbing system. But they weren't commonplace. I mean, most houses and residences continued to use baths to get themselves clean during this time. But the trend so far is how many inventions does it take to get to the modern shower? And the answer is more than we've heard. In Philadelphia, an invention that was not the shower, but was, success, but was crucial to the shower's success, was the modern-day water heater. Edwin Rude, Rudd? Rude. I'm going to go with Rude. R-U-U-D. A Norwegian engineer designed the first automatic hot water storage tank gas water heater. It's a mouthful. Um, they, they didn't really have the concise marketing down back then, but it's a water heater. Uh, he patented his invention in 1897. Uh, but to discuss this invention more... We first have to take a brief pivot to look at a different discovery and innovation, natural gas. Folks had discovered that you could use natural gas. Like, it turns out the earth is just farting, and we can burn those farts, and that's called natural gas. Uh, and we could use this, and it was used for burning as early as the ancient Chinese or Native American civilizations. But... It was not used for conventional heating until the 1780s when Britain began to use it to heat some of the homes and to light street lamps. Later, with the discovery of natural gas in the United States, hey, check that out. The land in the U.S. is farting too. Isn't that great? Companies began to tap into the resource. And as soon as some companies tap something, you know as soon as they tap it, they're going to start selling it. Mother freaker. I'm just... Okay. So, they start selling this natural gas or access to it, I guess. And for the longest time, natural gas was like a primarily used to produce light. Uh, it was like the lamp posts and all those things. Natural gas lit. It's kind of cool. In 1885, though, a scientist invented an open flame burner that used natural gas... As its, as its ignition source, and was used primarily in the chemistry field. The Bunsen burner was invented by Robert Bunsen, and it opened the gates for new uses of natural gas heating and cooking. As infrastructure pipelines for natural gas were laid in the 1900s, it began to be used to heat and cook, and was eventually picked up for use in the hot water heaters that... that Rude, Rude had, had invented and patented earlier. So we had the showers. The showers are in place. We have the plumbing hooked to the shower. We have the natural gas technology to heat the water 
and the hot water tanks with which to heat the water and distribute it to the shower. One problem, though. Houses were not equipped with this stuff. They didn't have these things just built in. Most houses houses still just had baths, no shower. Most houses didn't have a hot water heater. And the infrastructure, though laid, many houses didn't have the hookups for natural gas at this point. We're still burning wood. <laughs> at first, showers were installed in places like prisons and boarding schools, where standing water in tubs was less efficient in cleaning large numbers of people quickly. In the 1870s, measures of hygiene in France and other places in the world called for the installment of showers in public places. However, it wasn't until the 1920s, when most of America was too drunk to get a real clue what was going on, but they were also perfectly content with not having plumbing and electricity. Like, it's hard to imagine this, but just a mere 100 years ago. Like, the majority of homes didn't have plumbing and electricity. It's freaking bonkers. Like, like I said, I woke up and I took a shower for granted. And a hundred years ago, people were like, well, that's cool. But like, why would I shower at home? Like, I do that when I go to the pool or like the, the YMCA or whatever. But in the 1920s, through marketing and, quote, health and conservation standards, the U.S. began to promote and push showering to the wider public over baths. The U.K. did the same um, by the 60s. And by then, the electric shower had hit the market. Now, if you hear that and you go, electric shower, that sounds terrible. Um, the electricity was the means by which the shower was pumped and heated. Uh, so. We're getting there. But both of which would be needed to have running water. So, yeah. And that is, they let people have heated running water without a water heater tank. However, the National Standard Plumbing Code, first published in 1933, uh, and in it, it highlighted, hey, there might be some safety problems with having electricity hooked up to your shower, friends. Um, maybe we need a new solution. And so these standards of safety and, and public health uh, called for the installment of natural gas and plumbing to homes across America, and it began to be rolled out. With safety and familiarity, the installation of hot water heaters and, in time, showers followed. By the 1980s, just a wee 40 years ago, the shower finally surpasses the bath as the primary way of getting clean in homes and had even entered the world of luxury. Y'all, the shower, like the modern shower that you have in your bathroom at home, that's a fairly recent idea. Like the idea of a hot water heater that hooks up to your water line and thus produces hot water through your shower. I mean, houses didn't have that back then. It's kind of wild to think about. And as we look to the future... Showers have gone digital, being made with lights and fully automated water control and temperature controls. What a world. Showers are the product of a British inventor, a Norwegian immigrant, a German chemist, and a lot of safety and infrastructure and regulation, with just enough propaganda and health programming to bring us the running hot showers we love. It's great. Nothing quite hits like a hot shower. And as with most things on Privy... We have a lot to be thankful for. And, as with most things we have to be thankful for, we gotta learn how to use these dang things. And so, we gotta talk shower etiquette. A lot of this is gonna be self-explanatory, but when it comes to showers, I'm gonna explain it anyway. We need to follow some etiquette pieces. First, as you heard <clears throat> with me when I spoke with my wife last week, it was wild for me to think that, that they were showering with bar soap. Um, however, I did some research on shower hygiene, uh, and they found that bacteria doesn't really live on bar soap as much as it does on a washcloth or a sponge or a loofah. And they recommend that you should replace those as often as you are able when showering, preferably after every shower. Health experts, which, as we're going to see here with the advice they give, what do they know? 
suggests that you should not take a hot shower, but a luke lukewarm one. Now, here's what I'm gonna say. I get it. Like it it's probably better for your skin or some noise like that. But listen, have you ever taken a hot shower? Cause it's really good. It's so nice. It's better in every way than any other type of shower. So take that health experts and I will damage my skin a little bit if that's what it means to I get a hot shower. It's fine. We got one life. You might as well take a hot shower and enjoy it. Let that marinate. If you live in a home with other people and they are planning to take a shower, try to keep your shower to less than 10 minutes. Like, it is absolutely appropriate if visiting somewhere or even at your own house to communicate your showering plans and routine with the other people using the shower so everyone involved can get a shower at a temperature they like. General rule, if other people are planning to shower that morning or within the hour, keep it to less than 10 minutes. If not, I'd say you can go 20. Let it, let it ride. You know, just let it ride. You know, the other day I took our friend Jason's advice and I had a juice box in the shower and it, it was nice. Um, I think I'm going to try a cold soda pop next time, but I will admit there was something about having a cold beverage in the shower that just hit different. Most dermatologists and health people suggest taking a shower at night as it helps wash the, quote, contagion off of the day. Man, if they only knew COVID. Uh, but here's what I say. Shower when you like. Like, I'm a morning shower man. Part of that is I sleep hot and I get sweaty. So when I wake up, there's sweat. I need to deal with it. I need to freshen up. They also recommend these health experts that seem to know so much that you air or pat dry. But like chill out. Nobody's air drying. If you're laying your crevices open to the, the still evening air to air dry, you what are you doing? Like, just get a towel. Your skin, if your skin's that sensitive, I'm sorry that I'm not. But it's it's got to be okay. We have to draw the line somewhere. Um, when you shower, you need to leave things in such a way that that shower would be ready for someone else to take a shower immediately after you are finished. If you shed, that is, you lose hair while you are in the shower, you must clean your hair out. Please do it. Please clean your hair out of the shower. I beg of all people who shed in the shower, clean it out and don't rinse it down the drain because that's not where hair goes and that's how you get a clog. If you shave or brush your teeth in the shower, make sure you rinse down the dumb gel and globs of things. Like no one wants to step on like congealed toothpaste with their bare foot when they sally up into their shower. Just clean it up. You have running hot water to help you clean it up already. It has to be the easiest thing. It's gross. Don't leave your washcloth or sponge out. Hang it up when you're done. Just hang it up. When you get out of the shower, if you have a bath mat, you live on bath mat island until you are dry. If you are moving about the bathroom wet from the shower, Someone is going to slip on an eat floor. You cannot do it. You live on Bath Mat Island. And if you have to get out of the shower, mid-shower for something, just tidy up and dry it up. Like, dry up your path. It's fine, but just, like, make sure it's safe. That's all. If you're in your own home, I am of the opinion it is appropriate to pee in the shower. Now, before you cast judgment, as long as you ensure that your urine is completely rinsed down. Now, as a person who regularly gold soaks my toes daily when I shower, it's okay. Like, it's, right? Right? It's also okay to use the bathroom while someone is in the shower as long as they say it is okay. A surefire way to tell if it's not if the door is locked, guess what? You're not using the bathroom while they're showering. You should probably never poop in the shower. Although, if you do, you either need to waffle stomp or catch and release. Again, it's something that sometimes happens, and that's okay. And we do our best. Like, And I, I think most people would be like, just shut the water off. 
and get out of the shower and like do your deed and then come back. But listen, those of us, I I mean, those people who have done this, it, it works out okay. Like everything is fine. If someone is in the shower and you walk into the bathroom and the lights are off, I can't stress this enough. Do not turn the lights on. If you are listening to music in the shower, same story. Just let the music ride. Like, don't mess with their music. They're they're in their time. Shared sh- sh- <laughs> shared shower spaces are shared, and you need to remove your soaps and things when finished. If you leave it, they can use it or abuse it. If there is a queue or line for the shower, first come, first serve, unless you work it out. Like in college, sometimes people would have class, uh, and they'd be like, hey, like, can I jump the line? I have class in like 15, and I got to get going. We had a system where you wrote your name on the board or the mirror. I can't remember which. Uh, and that was how we formed the line. It was actually really nifty and worked really well. If you are in a public or shared shower space, you need only to engage in activities that you would do if your friends were in the room, except being naked. That's the only difference. And this last piece of advice brings me to a, a very trepidatious hunter's anecdotes to keep you afloat. Now, content warning for this hunter's anecdote. Um, this hunter's anecdote contains suggestions of sexual behavior. Uh, you have been warned. Feel free to skip ahead to the end of the episode. This hunter's anecdotes is called the Radio Disney Disaster. So when I was in college, um, to give you a little bit of a, a layout of my situation, my freshman year dorm room was immediately across from the bathroom. Uh, and so if we had our door propped open, we could see right to the bathroom door. And if it was propped open, we could see straight into the shower. And now you hear that and you go, oh, I bet I know where this is going. And I assure you, you do not. Um, and so one of the nice parts of this is like, as a person who frequents the bathroom so much, it was so easily located. Like, it was so easy to get in and get out and get my business done. You know what I'm saying? However, one of the downsides is we had a large speaker uh, in the bathroom that anybody was welcome to use. You could plug your phone into it and listen to your, your music while you did your bathrooming. And Frequently, people would play music that was just kind of obnoxious. And we had this gentleman uh, in our dorm who, for anonymity's sake, we're going to call him Chester, uh, because I think I've used Chester in the past, and I think that's just safe. But uh, Chester was, he was different. Um, And he often played music very loudly, and he often played music that he knew I did not like. And for I'm not going to describe that music because I think it will out who Chester is more. But one day, my roommate and I, um, the aforementioned roommate uh, of last week's episode, were sitting in our room just minding our merry old business doing homework. And Chester rolls up into the bathroom and he starts his process. Uh, and he puts on his music on his phone and it is just blaring Radio Disney, like very loud, just Radio Disney blasting from this giant speaker in the bathroom, directly across from the bathroom where we are trying to do homework. And I get it. Like he's trying to enjoy his thing and I'm getting ready to break one of my, one of my etiquette pieces. But I go in and I'm like, Hey, like, can we turn this down a little bit? And he's like, Oh yeah, it turns it down. And then as soon as we get back in the room, it is right back to where it was. Uh, and so I was like, you know what? Forget it. It's obvious I'm not going to get any homework done. I might as well mess with Chester a little bit. So I decide to call Chester. So while his phone is playing Radio Disney and he's in the shower, I call Chester. Uh, and you can hear the music kind of like, ooh, 
fade and then his ringtone starts going off and you just hear him like Ugh, and he hops the hops out of the shower and then as soon as i can see because i can see from my room as soon as i can see that he gets to the 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 speaker i hang up my phone call i'm like nope <laughs> nope and then he looks and he's like huh sees that he missed call for me and i just pretend like i'm not doing nothing uh, and he gets back in the shower and he's doing his thing we give it a couple more minutes and i was like i'm, I'm gonna call chester again i'm gonna go round two so i call chester and sure he's and we're, we're all in this and just beep, beep, dee, 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 and it and it just interrupts his whole music listening experience in the shower again and sure enough again he pops out of the shower and he you know he's all disgruntled he's like hey finally he's like he looks over he's like hey can you please stop that and i'm like oh yeah my bad my bad huh and then so this time like he's on edge and so he gets back in the shower radio disney's going hard Zach Efron is just shouting his his uh, high school musical life out. And I told my buddy, I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna scare the life out of this guy." So I like crawl into the bathroom. I'm like, woof, 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 on the floor, and I crawl up to the to the the single stall shower that he is in, and they had the like frosted glass showers. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna smack this shower up. I'm gonna scare the crap out of this guy, and I'm gonna beat it out of here. And I do just that. I go whammo and Chester, it flings open and Chester's caught off guard. Um, and it turns out that Chester was having a, an emotional, intimate experience to the radio Disney music, to which point I hightailed it out of there. Uh, because I had interrupted little Chester time and I was not about to stick around. And so, you know, I get back, I shut the door, and I'm just like really quiet. And my roommate's like, "What's going on?" And I explain this to him, and and so now every time after that, when we would he- and this didn't stop him, we would hear Radio Disney coming from the bathroom, from the shower, and we knew it was going on. It was Chester's time, and it kind of ruins Radio Disney for you. This has been a trepidatious Hunter's anecdotes. To keep you afloat. And this also brings us to the end of another episode of Privy. Showers are wonderful, and so are you. Thank you for listening. Again, connect with us on social, at PrivyCast. We would love for a rating, and Spotify's rating system is very easy to do. It takes two clicks. Thank you guys so much for listening. We want to thank Kevin McLeod for the use of Barroom Ballet as our intro and outro music. You can find Kevin's music at incompetech.com. His music is licensed under Creative Commons License Attribution 4.0. Thanks, Kevin. We would also like to thank Poddington Bear for the use of all the colors in the world as our Hunter's Anecdote intro and outro music. You can find Poddington Bear's music at poddingtonbear.com. Thanks, Poddington. This has been another episode of Privy. Thank you guys so much for joining us and listening. And now, as always, don't forget to flush. <laughs>